Uh, thank you for your time. Matt Maines, Drees Holmes, 211 Grandview Drive. Um, again, I hope you all have had a chance to read through the memo that we submitted. Um, more than anything, if you have any outstanding questions, please bring them up. Uh, we definitely want the opportunity to answer them uh, this evening. So I want to take some time to clear up some misunderstandings and some misinformation that I think is out there. Uh, the Grail has been a longstanding member of the community, and many of you have had the opportunity to enjoy their property. However, they are a private owner who has made an extremely tough decision to part with a portion of their land to help support their aging membership and pursue other initiatives, which is let, where what's led us here. As discussed previously, previously about annexation, all land is brought in as residential low, low density by code. This piece of land is earmarked for residential development, so the question becomes, is what is pro being proposed, is it consistent with the surrounding zoning, and do these property owners have, what do they have the right to develop? A portion of this property is already residential medium density, and aside from a small piece of St. Columban, everything else in Loveland that touches this property is either residential medium density or SPD with a higher density. At 1.92 units per acre, this is at the low end of what could be built on a residential medium density, so what is being proposed is very fair from a zoning perspective, and the SPD allows us to create a better plan. Uh, shifting to the traffic, there, were, there was always a lot of opinions on traffic, which is why we rely on independent traffic engineers to present us the facts. We took the initiative and performed a traffic study over a year ago to understand how the improvements needed to be made. While we were confident in our findings, I think there were a lot of questions that were brought up and, and on how this was performed. So as a result, the city initiated their own study with TEC engineering. And while it's not complete based on the staff report, what it does show is that what their findings are and what their numbers are are consistent with what the report regenerated. And in their professional opinion, they do not expect to see any significantly different results from their traffic study. The next issue, uh, infrastructure. Again, you know, like I said, this is typically addressed later on in the process and um, not always hashed out into detail in the zoning, but some questions have come up, and so I wanted to respond to some of that. We have been working with MSD. In fact, we had a meeting with them just yesterday and um, have a couple viable options for the sanitary sewer that were an alternative to the one that they uh, recently denied. So there are options there that, that we have available to us. The water service is going to be improved with the loop that's going to be created between O'Banionville and Oakland Road. And by law, we are not permitted to increase the stormwater runoff. There are agencies and reviewing agencies that are in place that do not allow us to overburden the system. They do hold us accountable, and they don't allow us to negatively impact the neighbors and the areas surrounding them. Um, we deal with them on a daily basis, and uh, they, they, they all hold us accountable, and I encourage everyone else to hold us accountable. Focusing on the planning and zoning aspect, the fact remains that there is a significant housing shortage in this area and a lot of the areas around here. Homes are going to be built in and around the Loveland area, and what this proposal is, it, this is what responsible planning looks like and what your comprehensive plan calls for. The property is well insulated from adjacent neighbors, and Dries is going to create, a uh, create an attractive streetscape. Rather than carving up more and more properties into unaffordable one-acre lots with minimal or no open space in the community, we have proposed an efficient, creative land plan. It provides 209 homes within the city limits with over 30% of open space per per preserved. We are providing a variety of home styles and high-quality amenities that will create a vibrant community and add value to Loveland. Finally, I want to make sure I highlight the journey of the Grail has taken to get to this point because I think it's important for context to have. In 2014, the organization chose to close the retreat, and through grants, they were able to negotiate the sale of 113 acres of their property to Claremont County Parks and took 25 to 35 percent below the appraised value. This would ensure 113 acres would be put into permanent conservation to be used as a park by the public forever. In 2017, 78% of their membership voted to sell the remainder of their land south of Abanyanville Road. After years of pursuing many different options, Drees was honored to be chosen by the Grail with the understanding that we would respect their values, maintain green space, help with Claremont County Parks, and protect the existing ponds and creeks. This plan allows us to do just that. The Grail has done their part for the community, and should this plan move forward, 
They will have helped preserve 137 acres of green space integrated with 209 home community on approximately 211 acres that they once owned. I'm very proud of the reputation that Dries has, and I think our customers and our partners can all vouch for our integrity and our willingness to do what is right. We have and will continue to work with Claremont County Parks to ensure that they can create their vision. We'll respect the Grail's values, and we'll make sure that this property is developed in a manner that is thoughtful and meeting with the goals and objectives of Loveland's comprehensive plan. This whole process is a long process, and what we're asking you tonight is to take the first step and vote to accept the proposed SPD. Thank you. Signed up, so and there's no opportunity to add any comments at this point. Um, no. I can no, give you written comments before I leave. Is there, I mean, let me have a show of hands of how many people would like to, to that have not spoken yet and did not sign up on the agenda would like to talk. No. We've taken over three hours of community yeah. input, I think we've been there and following. We will be taking some of their input in account. You have a hand at all? Well, we, we do have, we have, if we have only one, and I think you're the only one for it, so I'll allow you to talk for, again, five minutes. You can come up with your, um, your name and address, please. I am sorry I arrived late. <clears throat> I do appreciate everyone's comments. <clears throat> sorry. Um, I. I am Loretta Roki. I live in Miami Township. I am a Grail member, and I am very concerned about the Grail property as everyone else is. And I absolutely support all of your comments, all of your feedback. This is absolutely your public right to participate. And if this is not the best plan and you have a better one, if you're willing to purchase the property, if you honestly have a plan that says for $350,000, the House of Joy could be saved, I would absolutely love to see it and have it and share it with the rest of the participants of the majority that have found themselves in a position to be as careful as they can over the last eight years when several of the local community members have turned down, and local grail members have turned down several proposals, including from Turner Farm for redevelopment of the property because no one wants to see change. But the fact of the matter is, I grew up on a farm. There were five of us. By the time, you know, my older siblings are 70s and 80s, we're holding land that we can no longer afford to keep and we have to live. They needed to support their pensions and we came to the position where we carefully had to sell it as well. So if I could go ahead and read my prepared remarks, is that I am here to speak in favor of the Special Planning District, which does give you more control over development. If this were single family lot development, they could fill in all those ponds, they could raise all the hills and just flatten it out and put those one acre lots. And when you talk about the area that's undevelopable, it'll just be part of one of those one acre lots. I'm speaking to you as a grail owner and past employee of Grailville. I've also served on the Grail Council, Grailville Future Committee, and Grailville Implementation Committee. As in all families, our Grail sisters share differing opinions and experiences. Often we don't agree. However, in the case of the sale of the Grail land, the majority opinions and vote of the members supports the sale of this land for the greater good of the organization, which has members across the United States. It's very sad for Grail visitors to see the south side of the property decline, and we fear that it is a safety hazard and blighting influence on the area. It is also financially draining and a liability. Unfortunately, local members want to hold on to the past and protect the green space they can see from their homes. They have also enjoyed the use of this land for personal and professional purposes over several decades. non girl friends and neighbors have also been invited to enjoy the land and buildings without any personal investment or long-term involvement in supporting the Grail at Grailville. As several alternative proposals were brought forth, the same collection of local members formed opposition and defeated each one, including a sale to Turner Farm, as I mentioned, and the sale to the schools. Although I understand 
the bond it, it, it levy failed, and that's absolutely your, your right. Why should the Bureau's wishes to sell not be honored when the majority of the members are looking forward to using the proceeds to further our nonprofit mission? I challenge you to look at your own homes and research the history of the land it was born from. The decision to sell to a developer was not made lightly, and only after ensuring the conservation of 113 acres in cooperation with the Claremont County Park District and the use of Clean Ohio funds. Realize over 300 acres are owned by Grailville, and two-thirds of that land has been saved or put in conservation. There are several acres that could have been included in this new sale but restricted from development. That strategy would have provided the opportunity for DREES to reduce their density calculations. The same configuration with the same number of units on a greater number of acres would produce fewer units per acre, obviously. Instead, we required a guarantee that the development would harmonize with the topography, natural features of the land, and require the developer to work with Claremont County Park District to provide access for the roadway, water, and sewer amenities necessary to create a new Claremont County Park beneficial to the Loveland community. That's over 100 acres. This overall concept will only increase property values in the area, and the failure to develop this plan will hinder the ability of the Park District to create public access and provide amenities. If this proposal does not move forward, the Grail will be forced to consider fewer restrictions on the next sale, possibly offering a more compli compliant but less desirable alternative. We continue to value conservation efforts and wish to be good stewards of this land. However, this property is declining with each passing year. It would become increasingly difficult to maintain and retain the north side also, which houses the chapel the oratory that we hold so dear. Thank you, Thank you for your consideration.